For the third and final video for 4.3, uh, our learning objective is going to use stoichiometry to solve for precipitation reactions. This links directly to this science understanding, chemicals react in definite proportions. We need to undertake stoichiometric calculations for precipitation reactions. In a previous video, I've introduced to you stoichiometry and how we can use it to solve various uh, chemical reactions. Because now we are dealing with uh, precipitation reactions, we are dealing with solutions, which means that we can now be using this formula uh, N equals C times V. I've just revised these rules to account for that. Going through this, the first rule, we just want to record all the information provided using our balanced chemical equation. Second rule, we want to determine the number of moles of unknown, either using the formula N equals M over big M or N equals C times V. Third rule, we then use the mole ratio to determine the number of moles of our unknown. And then finally, we just calculate the information that is being asked. We're going to look at two examples to see how we can use stoichiometry to solve for precipitation reactions. Example one, 45.0 uh, mils of 2.00 molar iron 3 nitrate solution was completely reacted with an excess of sodium hydroxide solution. The equation for the reaction is given below. The question is asking, determine the mass of iron hydroxide precipitate that is produced from this reaction. So based on these reactants, we need to work out how much of this product is being formed. Let's firstly record all the information provided. So from our balanced equation, we have the concentration of our iron 3 nitrate solution, 2.00 moles per litre. We are trying to work out the mass of our iron hydroxide here. We also know that the volume for this solution is 45.0 mils or 0 0.0450 litres. We can then establish what our known and what our unknown is. So the iron 3 nitrate is our known and our iron 3 hydroxide is our unknown. Second rule, let's determine the number of moles of our known using one of these two formulae. Now we're given the concentration and volume, so we need to use this formula here. So the number of moles of our iron 3 nitrate is equal to C times V. We've got 2.00 times 0 0.0450, and we've got an answer approximately of 0 0.0900 moles. Just note to keep this answer in your calculator and then use it in the following step. Step three is then to use the mole ratios to determine the number of moles of our unknown. So looking at our balanced chemical equation, what we see is that the mole ratio of iron 3 hydroxide to iron 3 nitrate is 1 to 1. We can then rearrange and find that the number of moles is equivalent. So we can just write that as such. And then now that we know the number of moles of our unknown, we can now solve for the mass of our unknown. So in order to do that, we need to use this formula here. So the mass is equal to the number of moles times the molar mass. Over here, you can see the working out to determine the molar mass of iron three hydroxide. So you've got the molar masses of iron, three oxygens, and then three hydrogens. We're gonna substitute this molar mass into our equation over to the left here. Again, keeping this answer in your calculator. And then we should end up with an answer of 9.62 grams written to three sig fix. In example two, we have 3.188 grams of aluminium carbonate was formed from a precipitation reaction between solutions of aluminium nitrate and ammonium carbonate. The equation for the reaction is given below. So here we've got two AlNO33 uh, plus three lots of ammonium carbonate, NH42CO3, goes to produce Al2CO33 plus six lots of NH4NO3. The question asks, determine the mass of aluminium nitrate that is required to produce this. The aluminium carbonate is our product, so we need to work out how much of our aluminium nitrate we'll need in solution. Let's firstly record all the information that's provided. So from our balanced equation here, uh, we are trying to work out the mass of our aluminium nitrate but we were given the mass of our precipitate at 3.788 grams. Because we've got masses expressed here, it makes sense that we then 
want to calculate the molar mass in order to then work out the number of moles. The molar masses of our unknown and known are given as such, and I'll just get you to do a check and just make sure that this is right. And we get molar masses of 213.01 and 233.99 grams per mole respectively. So the second part of this is to determine the number of moles of our known using one of those two formulae, and hopefully you can see we're gonna use the first one. So number of moles of our aluminum carbonate is mass over molar mass. We've got 3.788 divided by 233.99, which is roughly 0 0.01619 moles. Keep that in your calculator. Then in step three, we're going to use mole ratios again to determine the number of moles of our unknown. So expressed here, the number of moles of aluminum nitrate over the number of moles of aluminum carbonate is equal to a ratio of two to one. Rearrange the equation so you get the number of moles of AlNO3 is equal to two over one times the number of moles of aluminum carbonate. And we get about 0 0.03238 moles. Again, keep that in your calculator and then finally calculate the information required. And the question asks for the mass of the aluminum nitrate. So we're going to use mass is equal to number of moles times molar mass. Substitute your number of moles, multiply it by the molar mass of 213.01, and we should get an answer of 6.897 grams written to four significant figures. So hopefully you should feel quite confident um, in carrying out any type of stoichiometric calculation, um, but in this case we're looking at precipitation reactions in particular. That concludes our work on 4.3 quantities and reactions. We'll definitely spend some time in class working through some examples. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.